Hi, this is a quick tip on how you can generate data and work with that data uh, alongside Spark data frames. Now the inspiration for this video is um, often when you're learning how to use data frames in Spark, you're always looking out for data. Now that data could be in the form of JSON, CSV, or you're manually generating this data. And oftentimes um, when you're trying out simple examples or trying to learn some of the functionality of a data frame, you're always scrambling to find uh, good data to work with. Uh, so um, since I've come across this problem often, I um, thought I'd share a quick tip on how you can generate data uh, using Spark. Um, so again, this is not necessarily an end-all, uh, be-all, end-all way to generate data, but uh, it's a simple tip. Um, so let's, uh, uh, to get started, let's actually generate that data. So the way I, I'd like to do it is uh, you can use Spark Context or Parallelize. And uh, let's say we want to generate one to say, um, let's say a thousand. Um, but if we do that, we'll just get in value. So let's actually generate data, um, much more types of data. So what we can do is uh, we can run a map and uh, for every value uh, in that, we can use Lambda expression so that we can create a, a, a tuple of uh, data. So we can take X, um, the value as is, say X plus one, uh, X into two and uh, say we can run X mod two, so um, odd or even numbers. Uh, so if I run that, you'll notice that, yep, that's uh, as expected. We get an RDD uh, with four integer columns. Uh, so then we can actually take that and convert that to a data frame. We can run the implicit function and um, since this is the first time I'm running that, that's uh, going to load all the dependency libraries. So it's going to take a couple of seconds longer. Uh, so essentially what we have done is um, we, are, we are generating um, an RDD and from that RDD we are converting it into a data frame. Um, since uh, this is something we'll want to use time and time again, so let's actually save that into a data frame. While df a data frame is that value. Uh, but uh, if we try to view the data now, df.show will only show a smaller subset of the data. Uh, as you can see, it's um, auto-generated these columns, uh, uh, but uh, might not be very meaningful. So let's actually give it some column names as well. So let's, uh, I won't be too creative here. I'm just calling it A, uh, B, oops, B, C and D and oops, D. All right. So now if we do a df dot show, um, we should hopefully have uh, more meaningful columns. I say meaningful, but the, uh, this isn't necessarily a good example, but I uh, hope you get the general idea here. So now we have data set that we can work with. So that was uh, the, uh, the real tip that I wanted to show you. So as you can see, we did not really have to scramble for um, generating data through a CSV or a JSON. Again, this is only useful if, uh, uh, again, subjective to what you're trying to do. So now that we have some sample data to work with, so uh, df dot uh, print schema. Uh, so you can see that, of course, um, um, since our operations were all based off of integers, so it's uh, obviously taken integers here. But uh, now that we have the data, we can uh, run some sample um, commands against the data frame. So this is where the learning really starts, if you will. So now you have the sample data, we can do some basic operations on that data. Like say, for example, if we wanted to uh, run some condition like say let's say where uh, a is uh, uh, say a less uh, okay it's greater than five and b less than uh, say uh, fifteen for example so this is a simple where condition um, oops I should have yeah that's okay so it's created that, let's just actually show that data. Uh, there you go, so that's a simple example of using a data frame dot where, but if you didn't like this uh, this approach and instead prefer to work uh, completely in Spark SQL, we can of course uh, um, register that table, register temp table, uh, or 
use a preferred one which is create temp view uh, in 2.0 create temp create or replace temp view and let's call that uh, test and now we can use spark dot sql again keep in mind i'm using 2.0 uh, so uh, s select star from test where a less than say 10 for example and again easy if i just sh run show yeah there you go so we have created that and finally uh, now that you have some data uh, the other thing if you wanted to test is uh, say the data frame uh, dot write uh, write dot save um, and here if uh, for example we wanted to store that in a temporary table or, or in this case it's files uh, parquet files is the default in case of uh, spark so well, let me just put that under temp uh, say demo slash uh, demo data frame let's say all right there you go we have now written files into a temporary folder uh, again um, this I'm running directly on my hard disk I'm not using HDFS uh, so depending on how it's been set up for you it should most likely be under temp uh, demo data frame and here you can see that we have just uh, written that uh, output uh, into Parquet. Uh, so again, it's really handy once you have uh, some sample data, um, it's, uh, you can quickly run through all these commands. So uh, this is a simple tip which I've uh, I've often used, um, particularly when I'm trying to run some commands and I have to, uh, you know, uh, when I'm trying to learn something, it's always easier when I've uh, got some quick data for me to work with and then I could quickly learn all the commands or test out the functionality using the data frame commands. All right, that's a real simple tip, um, but I found it really helpful in my personal journey learning Spark and hope you find it useful as well. Thanks for watching.